This tutorial will show you how to set up an Allen Bradley PLC for communication with Microscan's VisionHawk smart camera using Ethernet IP. I'll demonstrate how to use the RS Logix 5000 software to load an EDS file and start communication. We can start by creating a new project. Select the controller you'd like to use. Name the project. And make sure that the number of expansion slots matches what you have in your system. Then hit OK. The first thing to do when you want to communicate with a VisionHawk smart camera would be to import the EDS file. The EDS file needs to be imported into the system only once when you use the camera for the first time. You can import the file by going into Tools, EDS Hardware Installation Tools, hit Next, and you can register an EDS file. You register a single file. You can use Browse to look for it. Then hit Next. If you wish, you can view what's in the EDS file, but that's not necessary. When you hit Next, you can see the icon of the Vision Hawk. We hit Next again and confirm that this is the file you want to import. And we have now successfully completed the EDS wizard, and the Vision Hawk is now a known device in RS Logix. In order to add a Vision Hawk smart camera to your controller, you go to the Ethernet tree, right click, and select a new module. We can now search for the device data, for example, by entering Microscan. You can select the Vision Hawk. Double click and now name it. And enter the IP address of the camera. Next, you go to Connection and verify that you have set the right packet interval. 20 milliseconds is a good value to start with. It must be more than 10 milliseconds. If we hit OK and close, you can see that we have created a VisionHawk smart camera connected to the controller. Next, we can import a program with some example name tags. The way to do it is to go to the main program, right mouse click, and choose Import Routine. Select the AutoVision program, hit OK, and we have now imported three things with the program. There is a set of user-defined tags that define the different variables that are available in the input-output modules of the VisionHawk. We imported a small program that copies data from the camera into PLC memory and copies data from the PLC memory into the camera. The next step is to go to the Program tags and right-click Monitor Tags. You have a copy of the memory, the I.O. device available on the camera. We open it and can see the input assembly and the output assembly. The input assembly contains the status flags, virtual I.O., and the fields that correspond to Microscan Link. You can see the Microscan Link Boolean flags, the integers, longs, the floating points, and the strings. The same is true for output assembly. If you open it up, you can see that, like in Microscan Link, there is a total of 64 status flags, or booleans. There's integer 1 through 10. There's double integer, or long 1 through 10. The same for the 10 floating points. And you see that there are four strings available, three strings of 28 characters and one string of 92 characters. The same is true in the other direction, from the PLC to the Vision Hawk. You can see the Boolean 101 and 64, and then the integer 101 to 110. This corresponds to the fields you can see in Microscan Link. Right now the PLC is ready to run, and we need to make sure that we can communicate with the PLC. So you select the path to the controller. What we can do next is download the program. And the next step is to bring the PLC into run mode. 
Right now, the PLC is running, and it's already exchanging data with the Vision Hawk. We can check some status flags, and you can see that the camera is online and it's ready to be triggered. So the PLC is now communicating with the Vision Hawk over Ethernet IP. The next step would be to program the Vision Hawk with a machine vision job. Get information from the camera and at the same time send commands back to the camera over Ethernet IP. What we need to do is open up AutoVision. Connect to our camera. Create a new job. The first tool that we'll insert in this tutorial is the Presence Absence tool. We can publish the results of this tool to the PLC through Microscan Link, and at the same time set the tolerance levels from the PLC back again through Microscan Link. In order to take the two outputs, click the link and select Boolean 101 for the status flags. Click on the output of the tool and select Long 1 for the output. On the input side, we can take the tolerance and link it to long 101 for the minimum pixel count and long 102 for the maximum pixel count. I would also like to show you how to get strings into the PLC. In order to do so, I will insert the decode tool. And the decode tool reads the data matrix code. We take the status of the tool and link to boolean number 2 and take the string outputs and connect them to string 1. If we now click on the Microscan Link button, we open up to the Data Navigator and see what we have right now. Let's run the program once. Here we have a status flag that shows whether or not the Presence Absence tool passed. And we have a count value from the Presence Absence tool in Long 1. The minimum and maximum tolerance or allowed pixel count are shown in Long 101 and Long 102. The decode tool status is shown in boolean number 2, and the decode tool results in the decoded text. The last thing to do is to set up a trigger for the camera. Let's select the sensor trigger. We're now ready to go. Click on Run, and the job is downloading to the camera right now. It's ready. So for testing purposes, we can take a trigger here, get an image, and we can open up Microscan Link and the Data Navigator to have a look at the available tags and to refresh the values. The camera is running now. I'll minimize the screen and show it here. I will also minimize the screen of RS Logics. If we go to Program Tags on the main program and go to Monitor Tags, we end up with the Memory Table. And you can see that the camera is online. If we close the status flags and look at the Booleans, we can see that Boolean number 1 here, which corresponds to the Presence Absence tool, failed. And the barcode tool, which is boolean number 2, passes. And it also passes on this side of the tool. If we go to the long field, we can see the results of the count tool, which were stored in long 1 here. The count value is 30,547. We can also have a look at the barcode string, which is 123456, which matches the data matrix code and the string here. Controlling the camera from the PLC can simply be done by setting up values on the PLC side. So, for example, if we want to set a low threshold and a high threshold for the Presence Absence tool, we can say that at the minimum we should expect 20,000 pixels, and at the maximum, allowing 35,000. And when we refresh the values here, you can see that Microscan Link has already copied the values. At the same time, I can go to the control field here and I can find the trigger and I can trigger the camera and hit enter and you see the tool run with an updated value. 
If we change the value back to zero again and trigger once more, we can see the value change here. Now, if we look at what the camera returns to the PLC system, you can see that both the presence absence tool and the decode tool now pass. This is how simple it is to exchange the parameters between an Allen Bradley PLC system and an AutoVision smart camera.